that's tapped as well no daily and impart so two naked points of control and one daily so three untapped levels in this current range so in this current range we have three untapped levels so i don't think the price is going down like that just yet but i do think we're still in a range and the way to know if the range has broken up is like this let me explain so as i was explaining um i don't want to see a 12 hour close underneath this red line here because if you look at the way the the candles are forming around this in these in this range we haven't had a 12 hour close underneath this line and that corresponds to this 12 hour expanding candle you see that so clearly this 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 level on the 12 hour time frame is holding the price and i think it would look very unusual to get now to get a close down here don't think that would look good yeah and so just bear that in mind right so that would be my first indication that um, something has changed and when you compare it to the liquidity levels look it's coming up underneath a naked weekly point of control and it's coming underneath a daily level and these are untouched levels so i think if you want to for the price to come underneath those two levels and close here that would be a real sign of weakness so just bear that in mind but i think what's happening now is that we're just still ranging i can't i don't know if it's ready to go up yet i think it's quite weird for the price to just go up after we've gone up like this i think it would look weird to just go up like that that like that doesn't really make much sense to me the way that I've drawn that and when you're looking at the formation of this move yeah I feel like there is a harmonic here <laughs> David you're the harmonic expert show me who can tell me is there a harmonic here I don't know I feel like there's a harmonic forming here. Let me have a look. Cipher, a bullish cipher. Guys, I'm just making this up, right? I have no idea. This would be a cipher. That's the cipher. This is a Gartley. That's a bullish Gartley. And then you have some other ones. You've got this, potentially you've got a shark 
as well. See that? That is going much lower to there. There's something forming here, guys. I I, I got I, I sense that there's something forming. I can't tell you what it is, but I feel like there's some kind of harmonic forming here because I don't I don't really see this price uh just going up like it doesn't like in the highs i think we have to see what happens in the highs here and i, I don't know if we're going to get a, a, like a squeeze we might get like a failed auction and then it's gonna look more like something in the highs and then we have to see which one of these harmonics are forming now if we don't get into the highs and take that then you're looking at a lower high so you have to look at these harmonics. Um, it looks like it's something bullish, though. It doesn't look like bearish to me, what's forming. It looks like a bullish harmonic. If you take this X pivot lower down here, it doesn't really matter where it comes, to be honest with you, here or here. Um, possibly there. It doesn't really matter. Gartley or Cypler. David is saying, yeah, it could be a Gartley or Cypher. Depends on what it does here at the potential C. So we're looking potentially at a Gartley or a Cypher. And we're looking at a bullish Gartley or Cypher. And depending what it does will depend on how deep this correction is. So if we go lower, then this will be flatter. But... I feel like it's more like a cipher, the way it looks like. The, the Gartley's a lot flatter, unless, of course, this is from down here. Then that would look more like a Gartley. And then this would be... Because they're quite parallel, aren't they? they to... I don't know. I don't really like that. I think that would be more like a Gartley if it was like that. That's more like a Gartley. There. And that's the wrong pivot. It's this pivot. So I f I'm thinking a cipher. That's what I'm thinking, actually. Get everyone really bearish. And then go up. You also have a bat as well. If you have a bat, it's basically that. Same thing, really. You're still going underneath the B. And so... It'd be hard to take this D trade unless you get back above the B. So really the trade, the, the trade, I mean, there's two, there's two trades to have right now to short. One would be to short now um, and potentially get invalidated because we're going higher. So that's your trade. Or let this go higher and swing failure and then that's your trade and you knew you're trading for a, a cipher basically look this one here and then the long is the d but you it would be very difficult to take the d unless you get a swing failure of the b that would be easy that would be an easy entry Right there. And you have your invalidation there. And then you're, then you're into a bullish cipher. And so basically what you're looking at. So this is a question. Do we go up? To go down? To go up? Or do we just go down? So the, the, the difference is the difference is between a cipher 
and a bat depending on whether the C is above the A or the C is below the A it makes no difference to the bottom configuration of the X B D the X B D I think the X is probably here to be honest with you it doesn't really matter so SFB the short so David is saying so SFB the short the A and then SFB the long B I think so yeah I think that those are the two trades in play right now I don't I don't think I'm not expecting it to just go up it just doesn't make sense to just go up because of this kind of push up it could but you, that's why you would wait for the swing failure on both counts and that's the safest entry and then the other thing that could form is this bat uh sorry this butterfly but for this butterfly to form we can't make a new high and if we're looking at a butterfly um so let me just hide these now into my harmonics trade cipher trade if i uh if i do another one for a butterfly you're just making a lower high here and see so you have the difference you have a bat and a butterfly so this is a bat and this is a butterfly that would really get people bearish this so you basically that's that's the butterfly and then the bat would so on both cases you still have the the, the sfp trade here you have, have the sfp of the b into the d and to make a bat or you have the SFP of the X into the D to make a butterfly. So you, it depends. And that's only if we make a lower high. If you make a lower high, you're not taking the short because you're just not taking the short. You're only taking the short if we swing failure the A. It'd be too hard to take the short now without putting your stop above the A now. You you just have to short now. I can't I can't see why you would. I I feel like we we're taking the high. What if it keeps going past the eight? It's soft flip. So if it keeps on going past the eight, so let me just save this as well. Create a good control range. Get rid of these volume levels. All right. So for continuation, you need to flip this uh, line. It's as simple as that. And that's you're just going to get continuation. But you're not going to you're not going to continue if you if you come if you if you come back down like that. There's no continuation there. And then it's easy to see if you get a continued fake out, because if you do that and then just go back up, then it'll be easy to see. Very easy to see that kind of behavior because you have a very definite high line in the highs. So these are very easy to trade because you can see what happens around these. Lengths. They're very clear lines. So it's very easy to see what happens. And the best time frame to use is either the 15 minute or the 30 minute time frame yeah probably 15 minute is is going to give you an earlier entry but more liable potentially for fake out 30 minutes probably going to be the best time frame to use the minute you start seeing a close or two closes on either side of the line that's going to give you the idea of acceptance on either side of the line yeah so one close followed by a second close like two closes and then if you get two closes back underneath the line, then you have an immediate rejection. So if you're if if you're not if you're looking for a failed auction, this is the kind of behavior you're looking for. 
And if it's an SFP, it's an SFP. An SFP is literally it's one candle up and down. It's like an instant reaction. That's your SFP. And then you can just short that. And if you SFP and you short it as the price comes down immediately, it's an immediate reaction. The people who short will immediately take profit. So you'll you'll get a quick price will come back up. And you just don't want it to, to make another high. <laughs> if it does, then it could. You could you could you could take another SFP. It's possible. Because the problem with SFPs is sometimes uh early SFPs get punished. And when it comes to swing failure patterns, you sometimes have to take it three times. Sometimes. Once, twice three times <laughs> that's the problem with, with swing failure patterns um and each time you each each time the swing the the the, the, sh the early shorts are punished and so sometimes it's just better to wait for the price to just find acceptance back underneath the line or rejection from the higher line higher part of the line sometimes yeah um, but that's why people take with SFPs. The reason why the price comes back up is because these people who are shorting quickly take their profits and they take their profits on market because they want to, uh, they want to take their profits and have a risk-free trade and they'll take most of their profits and then they'll build on that position if the price continues to go down. So they'll compound. So what they'll, what will happen with an SFP trade is what you'll get let me just do it here so it looks so it looks so it looks right you'll get the price to go up go down and then they'll take their profit somewhere down here and then they'll look to compound it on some kind of local golden pocket So as the price is taking profits, as the price comes back up, that will be an entry to compound their profits with a high invalidation back above there. So, so sometimes you'll get, that's why the, sometimes the SFPs look like head and shoulders patterns. But if you get in too early, then what will happen is um, you'll get the left shoulder of a head and shoulders pattern. Yeah, that's what will happen. So you'll get the first SFP, you get the second SFP, and then you get the third one. You get like a little head and shoulders, and I haven't drawn it right, but basically the golden pocket will probably be on that SFP line somewhere. So anyway, so this is the kind of action we're looking for in the highs and if you have continuation you're not going to long no one's going to long that the only real way that you would long uh, a breakout is and this is the only way okay and i can't no one i'm not expecting anyone here to do it but the only way that you would long a breakout i've done it before uh is if you're looking at exo chart when it happens so you have the line clearly marked out. It's a uh, previous week high. It's this yellow line here. This, this high line here. And what you will see is in the orders, you're gonna see a large amount of volume with a lot of imbalances. Uh, and imbalances are basically where orders aren't filled. So what do I do? So I don't know if I can show you. I'll see if I can show you a, like a breakout. Let me see. Maybe this.
You see these like black squares. These are imbalances. That means the orders weren't filled as the price went up. You see that? So you have large volume uh, and you have uh, order imbalances as the price goes up. And basically that signifies that there were no orders to fill as the price went up. With the increased volume, with the increased open interest, although this was an increasing open interest, this was a little bit of a squeeze, but the imbalances was what you were looking for. So you get that, you could probably long it in a, in a breakout long, probably. Um, but you'd have to have EXO open. You'd have to have this open. Let me see if I see anyone else. Yeah, look, look at this. See these imbalances? See these? 1.4 million. And you had quite large increase. There's like, look at this delta. It's 13 million market longs. And the OI, even though it went down, it went down because there was a squeeze, but it actually went up because uh, new longs opened. Yeah. So the net open interest was down only nine, minus 908,000. Uh, but the reality is, I can't see the total OI. Hold on, does it say? No, it doesn't say here. Can't see it. But that's 13 million longs opened. And half of that was on open interest. And look at all those imbalances. So you have all of these long orders that weren't filled on a market long. Does that make sense? So when you see that, that gives you the confidence to longer breakout with the increasing volume and order imbalances. And what happens, I can't show you here because it hasn't happened, but if you get uh, the price come back, it will, it will stop at those black, that black, those imbalances and those imbalances are like orders that haven't been filled. They're waiting to be filled. And so they act as support as the price goes up. If the price comes back for some kind of re retrace in the next candle, it will come back to those imbalances. And so going to the current breakout, if you're going to see, if you're going to see a breakout and you're going to trade a breakout, you basically need this open. And then you would need to look at the, the way the imbalances form as the price goes up. That's basically how it's done. Yeah. And then you'll know if it's a healthy breakout or not, basically. And that's, it's based on orders. So let me have a look here. Let me see if I can show you an example. So you see this price went up, you had these imbalances. And so what actually happens is when the price comes back, it finds support on, on those imbalances. That's where it first finds support. It's it's on these imbalances. And that's what you want. You want that because you want support to be created as the price goes up. Alright, that's uh, XO. Forget about that. Any questions? Anyone? Alright, so the, the action plan for today, if um, just to go over it again. If anyone is looking to trade or just practice trading, that's cool. It's good to practice uh, and it's good to just keep on doing this because it gives you confidence for the future. Um, we're looking for potentially this harmonic, which is a, a cipher. So we're taking the trade on a swing failure of C and then we're taking the trade on a swing failure of B. Uh, Okay, or we're looking for a butterfly and that would be a lower high forming now and I think you could, I don't know, but I think you could probably still take the short, but you'd have to wait for the C to form and for the price to drop. And I think you have this previous high now which is acting as support and resistance here. So I think potentially if we allow the price to fall, back test, 
you could take that long uh, short and just have your invalidation on the C and then you're trading the, the idea of this uh, butterfly harmonic all the way down to the D and your major take profit is going to be underneath the B because then that could be forming some kind of bat. All right. So we have a few trades on the table right now and let's just see which one pans out and uh, maybe one of them will. All right, any questions? Any questions? That was quite good. I like that. <laughs> uh, let me set my alerts before I forget. Uh, add an alert. SFP short. Let's see. Um, let me do one below. BTC. And then how far down did the harmonics go? Let me just check. All right, so I'll set another alert because I might take a sneaky a sneaky entry lower down. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'll show you. I'm gonna I'm gonna imagine my home up so i'm just going to imagine our other cipher and then i'm just going to imagine um some kind of um fib some kind of fib um extension Well, actually, I'm going to pull it right down to him. See that? So we have to see how high the C gets because that's going to be really important. Uh, and obviously, if the C is much higher, that will change the, the value of the extension. You see that? So if it goes higher, the extension is lower. You just don't want to get down below the X. That would look wrong. Um, If it does go below the X, then you're looking at another, you're looking at something else, aren't you? What are you looking at? A butterfly. Why is my butterfly higher up? That's wrong. My butterfly should be down here. Yeah. So I think that all of like, just you would, you would use fibs to to create your targets for for the for your targets basically so you basically try and line them up with the fibs on the extension that's how you would do it so if we're doing a butterfly we're going down to to d and then you'd basically aiming for the to the one to two david is saying or could be an abcd one to one what's an abcd one to one how would you draw that? I've got my SFE mark there. Let me put one here. Don't just take these SFPs. Just when you do it, make sure you draw the harmonic to make sure it's lining up. And the confirmation, I think the easiest way to do it is wait for the swing failure. Because what will happen is you're going to get some kind of, I'll show you actually. So let me just hide these. So basically in this drop, here there was a harmonic too, and I'll show you this one. There's some here, 
to here, to here, to here, to here. That was a butterfly. Let me just bring the image. See that? Butterfly. So we had a butterfly. And so basically, if you wanted to take that butterfly, in effect, what you would have done is you just have to wait. I mean, you could just take it. <laughs> and so if you were to do a fib extension, you see how the price uh, comes almost into the 1.618 of this extension, but actually it doesn't manage to close underneath this, uh, you see, kind of there. So the area of resistance on the extension is 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 that area. So you could have you could have you could have long there, trading this harmonic. But the safest way to do it is uh, either a swing failure of the X as the price comes up, or even safer if you're not sure, just swing failure here a bit higher up. It doesn't really matter. Because you still you still you're still in a winning trade. Now the price is moving in your direction because you're trading a bullish pattern, a bullish harmonic which is completed. Now obviously the lower you take it, the the, the more ROI you have because your invalidation is here, because you're not now expecting it to do that. You're trading the harmonic to go up. As the but I mean it doesn't mean you need to a wide invalidation because if you're trading a swing failure and the price is going up you don't need to have invalidation down there like any one of these candles could have been your invalidation the price just kept on going up right so that's something to bear in mind and so if we want to trade this one now similar idea let's just say it does exactly the same thing. So you're basically, let's just say we have a higher, a, a higher time frame butterfly forming. Then that's quite extended and that wouldn't work. See that? It wouldn't work because it would be above the X if it came to the D. So I don't even know if a butterfly will be forming then, then it might be a bat. See? So you either have... The choice is a butterfly or a bat, depending on how far the D extends, whether it goes down before below the A or the X or below the X there. And so then if you're not going to go all the way down, you just have to see where it forms resistance. And that would only be in play if the C holds here to go down. Right? So that's kind of what I'm imagining. So there's 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 some variations in what could form. And we just have to see how that plays out. Just keep an eye on that. The easiest one will be a swing failure. Get rid of that. Put that there. Hide that. And these are our levels. All right. No questions? Okay, let's go on to TRVL, have a look. Um, actually, before I go into TRVL, let me just have a look at the dominance chart. Oh, look at that. That's very nice. I like to see that. Who doesn't like it when <laughs> Bitcoin dominance drops? And uh, we did have it in going into this value area high. And I did have this line marked out and look what's happened. It's kind of rejected from that value area high. So obviously you have to see what happens. Maybe we fall here and come back up or maybe we go a little bit further. You know, 
let's see what happens there but that's good we want that to have, we need uh bitcoin dominance to to go down if we want our alts to pump <laughs> so that's not that's never a bad idea um i've got eth btc potentially in this higher time frame diamond pattern it's very rough as you can see i've drawn it very rough um we're in the value area we're in the high of the value area now that doesn't mean anything because look how the way how it just went above it before but we are into resistance at the moment so we have to see how this plays out too but at the moment it's basically ranging and these kind of behaviors where it does this kind of crazy s is reminiscent of the midpoint of a diamond pattern which is why I identified it as diamonds. Yeah. So let's just see. These could be the pivots of our diamond, these two points. Uh, and it would be easy to know if it broke out because for the sake of argument, we just do this. You know, and then once you take that high, you've broken out. Now, now you're, 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 you've broken out of the diamond pattern. Usually with diamond patterns, I, I don't really know pat diamond patterns to to break out the the other way. So now that we've we've come into the from the highs, you're expecting it to go out from the highs too. If it doesn't do that, then you're forming another pattern. So if we go up like this and do something else, you basically invalidate your diamond pattern idea completely, and now you're forming some other higher time frame pattern so the diamond pattern was a failure so you, I don't necessarily expect this to break out downwards but I wouldn't be surprised if if it did fail like not all diamond patterns if they are forming succeed there is a percentage that there's a failure and then you end up with some other kind of higher time frame pattern who knows what it's going to be let's just imagine this is what happens it could it could be i don't know it could be some kind of i can draw this right who knows some kind of wedge you know who knows it could be something else but that would be a sign of weakness because if you come then you come back into the range after a failed diamond pattern then you're probably going down as well and so actually you could potentially be forming you know, like a megaphone, you know, anything can form after you have failed patterns. You basically, when you fail patterns, uh, you form other patterns. And so it's just something to bear in mind. But at the moment, it's looking quite bullish. So let's just see how that plays out. Um, let me have a look at the total market crypto cap. Yeah, that looks amazing. I love that. We're above the previous high. We're kind of holding support a little bit. Weekly candle. Bullish AF. We're back above this um, higher time frame mid channel that I have. This midpoint. See that? So we've, we've closed nicely above it again. And so if I zoom in. You can see it was acting as resistance here and then we broke above it we back tested it here and it's a nice clean break so we have some nice uh re support levels on this previous high which potentially could back test on the midpoint of this higher time frame channel and it'll be easy to see if we get a rejection from this upper part because now on the weekly time frame, at least you just don't want to see the price coming back underneath. You know you, that would look wrong. That would, that would look like a failed auction into this higher higher part. So we can keep an eye on those to see if there's a change. But at the moment, it's looking bullish. Let's see. Uh, let me just have a look at these ones. These ones are good. 
Yep, I don't see any problems with that one. That's the total market cap excluding BTC. This is the market cap excluding BTC and ETH. Looks okay. I don't see anything. It's looking bullish. What we really want is BTC to crash actually now because they're all looking bullish. And if BTC crashes, then we're good. <laughs> then the alts will run. That's really what everyone wants. No one really cares about Bitcoin. <laughs> Do they? All right. Let's have a look at TRVL now. There's a lot of interest in TRVL. <laughs> so let's have a look and see what T 